Order, order, I say. I thank you all for gathering here on such short notice. This day we must speak of grave affairs and their implications for the future of Charlie, nay, of this very star. Said affairs concern all citizens, and so we have called for a public assembly. You may have heard rumors of the Talophoroi and the havoc these madmen wreak abroad. Under normal circumstances, we would pay little heed to petty disturbances outside our borders. The final days, however, are another matter altogether. For we dare not ignore these prophetic words of Eld. The end bearers will come, ushering chaos and calamity. The final days descend and devour the very star. I've never heard this prophecy. Is it true? Will all that really happen? Calm yourselves. The time has come to speak of the Forum's most sacred duties. But first... Give voice to the voiceless. Let bindings be unbound. By unanimous decree, I declare the enchantment broken. Master Leveilleur, if you would. Very well. Two hundred and seventy years ago, our forebears began an expedition in the Dravanian hinterlands in search of a route to access the ethereal sea. This much is public knowledge. Their findings, however, would become the Forum's most closely guarded secret. What those researchers discovered in the Hinterlands was not a passage unto the Ethereal Sea, but the very heart of our star, and Hydaelyn herself. She spoke to them of a calamity that would extinguish all life and of a means by which we might be spared. The moon. Tis in truth a gargantuan vessel built to serve as sanctuary for her children and deliver them from this doom. Much like Nuncref's hope in ages past, it will bear the people of a world in the throes of death to a new home. Needless to say, this will be no small undertaking. To facilitate the great work, the Forum has maintained close contact with the servants of Hydaelyn, who presently reside on the moon. Convinced that the foretold end was all but inevitable, we began amassing a wealth of knowledge, not merely for the betterment of our nation, but in preparation for the journey to come. This to us now? By the gods, how long do we have? While we cannot say with certainty, we believe the hour to be nigh. We received a transmission from the moon suggesting as much not long ago. Which is why we must in earnest begin preparations for the great exodus. For his impressive contributions, 
and the leadership he demonstrated during our withdrawal from Dravania. We have elected Master Leveilleur to oversee this initiative. Fellow scribes and scholars, my countrymen, we face a threat of unprecedented scale. We must challenge the trials before us with composure and conviction if we are to find salvation. The wisdom of Charlian has ever been a shining beacon in the darkness, and so it shall continue to be. It is our solemn charge to see our heritage preserved for future generations. For those who will come after, we will brave a new frontier. Administrative edicts will be relayed to all major institutions ere long. In the meantime, carry on with your duties. With that, I hereby call this assembly to a close. remember what mother told us when we visited home that it wasn't until after we were born that father seemed to lose himself in his work if that great work of his was the evacuation of this star then yes it wasn't for his benefit Would you mind waiting here a moment? I wish to speak with Father before we leave. Thank you. I shan't be long. If it's all the same to you, I have a few choice words to share with Father as well. So, come to call us cowards and bid us join your fruitless battle against the inevitable. Nay, we do not object to the Forum's proposal. On the contrary, those who wish to flee have every right to do so. Orianger is cooperating with your associates on the moon to ensure that all is ready should evacuation be our only recourse. Then whatever your business, I suggest you be brief. Though we cannot boast the boundless wisdom of Charlian, we have first-hand knowledge of foreign cultures and have conversed with no small number of peoples. These experiences have taught us fundamental truths that cannot be recorded in any tome nor charted on any map. The beating heart of this planet is its people many of whom would give anything, even their lives, to protect the lands they love. Many may choose to join you in the end, but what of those unwilling or unable, for whom escape will never be an option? What would you have them do? To ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, Father. It is indolence. This is why we choose to fight. We'll not ask for your understanding, Father. Only that you don't turn a blind eye to the good we have done. That we can still do. We're not children in need of protection. Hold fast to your principles and let the world burn if it please. But we believe there is still another way. And if there is, we will find it. You see if we don't.
Do as you will. Just stay out of our way. Were he not so consumed with self-righteousness, he might tell you how proud he is of you both. Bold words call for bold action, and there'll be no turning to your father should plans go awry. As if I ever would. So long as there are those who wish to stay and fight for this star, we have to do what we can to help them. And if we're to do that, we'll need to be well rested. Wouldn't you agree? And having triumphed over what we once thought to be the source of all evil, I can think of no one in greater need of at least a dozen winks. Shall we then? To the Annex. To prepare for tomorrow. You're still awake. Good. Might I trouble you to stand still for a moment? Hmm. Nothing appears out of the ordinary. A precautionary measure. You will recall that serving as a vessel for abundant light in the first very nearly ended poorly. In your recent battle on the moon, you were almost certainly exposed to similar, if not greater, forces. Fortunately, from what I can see, you and your ether are none the worse for wear. Would that Reen were here to confirm my assessment. To think you actually found yourself in a direct confrontation with Zodiac. As if Xenos gallivanting about in your body was not misfortune enough. Did you so grossly offend every single deity in a past life that they saw fit to place a curse upon your soul? Forgive me. That was in poor taste. I recall vividly how battered and broken it was in the depths of Amarant. Would that you could have seen it with your own eyes. Mayhap then you would understand why the greater part of me is glad you did not. It was... A horror beyond description. Promise me you will be careful, that you will seek my counsel if you feel unwell. That puts my heart at ease, if only a touch. I suspect it will grow colder as the night wears on, so do be sure to stay warm. Sleep well, and may the shadows keep you.
Thank the gods that tower is gone. The sight of it was enough to make me sick. Thank the Ilsebar contingent, more like. Word is, they fought their way into Garlemald and toppled the bloody thing themselves. Not just the one, neither. All the towers have up and vanished. Aye, I heard the same. Commander Aldin and his troops helped keep casualties to a minimum, too. But is it true they brought back tempered Galleon soldiers? As Commander Aldin tells it, they've a treatment for that now. But don't you worry. Cured or not, they've no plans to bring them into the city proper. I see. Well, that's a relief then. I know we've brothers and sisters among the lot, but I can't say I'm eager to welcome them home. Only to think about it for a while yet. They're to be looked after in Alagana for the time being. Another day, another commission of paramount importance. Well, what have we here? Hmm. Hey, are you all right? that? No. The shadows play tricks. Nothing more. The towers are gone, and the Garlean threat is abated. And yet, why does it feel as though it's about to get much, much worse? And lo, vile beasts did rise. Leaving naught in their wake but blood and ash. Sun scorches earth and boils seas. And our sins ascend unto the heavens. Three dudes to unmake all we were. My friends, I trust you have heard the news. We have. What can you tell us of the situation, Your Excellency? Last night, the isle was rocked by tremors. 
and the earth itself cried out. Aloft the heavens began to burn. From all about, unholy beasts, the likes of which we had never seen, came forth in fury and rage. No, to say they came forth would be inexact. The people of Rajathan themselves transformed into these baleful fiends. Though the phenomenon was observed throughout our lands, the first creature, the largest and most dreadful of the lot, wrought havoc upon us here in our fair city. Though they bear superficial resemblance to divinities of legend, they are ungodly abominations. The people decry them as blasphemies. The large one's rampage has since taken it to the northern reaches of the island. I mean to dispatch our radiant host in an attempt to quell the threat. And what of Vritra? Vitra too makes for the north of his own accord, and yet... He knows the blasphemy and its minions were but yesterday his beloved people. I pray his boundless compassion and mercy does not deter him from taking unenviable but necessary action. Understood. I ask that you allow us to aid you in quelling this threat. You would risk your lives to help us yet again? I have no words to express my gratitude. Our regiments approached the north from several directions, with a number of units set to depart from the docks of Yetnwad. They will make landfall in an area of dense jungle, where one can expect to encounter dangers even beyond the fell beasts we hunt. I leave you to your preparation. You will find me at the docks when you are ready to depart. We're as prepared as we'll ever be. Let's go. As I feared. What is it? The beast was there, and now it is no more. Yes? Indeed. We saw it plain. But you didn't, did you? I saw nothing. Not the blasphemy that perished here nor the other men turned beasts. And because of this, I now see all too well. There is no ether. Where the creatures should be, I saw naught but emptiness. Emptiness? But that would mean... Recall the words of the Watcher. "'Twas a stagnancy of ether, a cessation of flow, leading to decay and absence, that led the ancients to conclude their star was dying. This is the same phenomenon. The instant these people are seized by the transformation, their ether begins to rot and crumble away like dried mud. Until, from their corporeal forms to their very souls, naught remains. 
The beast spoke with its dying breath. Surely at least a sliver of the man it was endured. Perhaps so. But even if the process was incomplete, it was little more than a faint residue. Gods be good. You're saying they cannot be saved. Not by any means known to me. Or by any means at all, like as not. For there is naught left to save. They return not even to the ethereal sea. Vitra, my friends, I am heartened to see you safe. You put your secret at risk. Those closest to me already know the truth. A truth I must now share with one and all. Vitra, calamity has come to Razatan. Our fair nation is rent by screams of pain and despair. More than ever, we require a strong leader to shepherd us through the storm. Reveal your true self to our people, Vitra, and guide us to salvation. What madness is this, I won? Thou dost forget thyself. Were we to reveal our duplicity, it would do naught but foster confusion and chaos. Nay, I shall remain the Sarchap's loyal ally and do battle with the beasts. Easing hearts and leading the people to safety is thy task and thine alone. that you remain at Ahewan's side and render unto him what aid you may. I know not what lies ahead, but without you, Radzetan will not survive. Take me with you. I am as at home fighting in the air as I am on land. Take me with you. Were well, my words unclear, I require no assistance. Thy place is at Ahiban's side. Estinia, here. The last thing you ever wanted, a link pearl. We'd gain much from knowing your elevated perspective. And it'll keep you from getting lonely, which I know you love. <laughs> you heard the man. Seems I'm coming with you after all. Then I pray thy grip is iron. Be it on thy head if thou dost chance to. Now, shall we? I 
I fear it is as Vitra says. We will not survive this on our own. While I am loath to impose upon you again. I would insist if you did not. Tis the very reason we have come. Then once more I find myself without words to thank you properly. Let us return to the capital and plan our next course of action. And lo, vile beasts did rise. leaving naught in their wake but blood and ash. Sun scorches earth and boils seas. And our sins ascend unto the heavens. Three dooms to unmake all we were. My friends, I trust you have heard the news. We have. What can you tell us of the situation, Your Excellency? Last night, the isle was rocked by tremors, and the earth itself cried out. Aloft, the heavens began to burn from all about. Unholy beasts, the likes of which we had never seen, came forth in fury and rage. No. To say they came forth would be inexact. The people of Rajat Han themselves transformed into these baleful fiends. Though the phenomenon was observed throughout our lands, the first creature, the largest and most dreadful of the lot, wrought havoc upon us here in our fair city. Though they bear superficial resemblance to divinities of legend, they are ungodly abominations. The people decry them as blasphemies. The large one's rampage has since taken it to the northern reaches of the island. I mean to dispatch our radiant host in an attempt to quell the threat. And what of Vitra? Vitra too makes for the north of his own accord, and yet... He knows the blasphemy and its minions were but yesterday his beloved people. I pray his boundless compassion Mercy does not deter him from taking unenviable but necessary action. Understood. I ask that you allow us to aid you in quelling this threat. You would risk your lives to help us yet again? I have no words to express my gratitude. Our regiments approach the north from several directions, with a number of units set to depart from the docks of Yetnwad. They will make landfall in an area of dense jungle, where one can expect to encounter dangers even beyond the fell beasts we hunt. I leave you to your preparation. You will find me at the docks when you are ready to depart. as prepared as we'll ever be. Let's go.
as I feared. What is it? The beast was there, and now it is no more. Yes? Indeed. We saw it plain. But you didn't, did you? I saw nothing. Not the blasphemy that perished here, nor the other men turned beasts. And because of this, I now see all too well. There is no ether. Where the creatures should be, I saw naught but emptiness. Emptiness? But that would mean... Recall the words of the Watcher. "'Twas a stagnancy of ether, a cessation of flow leading to decay and absence, that led the ancients to conclude their star was dying. This is the same phenomenon. The instant these people are seized by the transformation, their ether begins to rot and crumble away like dried mud. Until, from their corporeal forms to their very souls, naught remains. The beast spoke with its dying breath. Surely at least a sliver of the man it was endured. Mayhap so. But even if the process was incomplete, it was little more than a faint residue. Got to be good. You're saying they cannot be saved. Not by any means known to me. Or by any means at all, like as not. For there is naught left to save. They return not even to the ethereal sea. Vitra, my friends, I am heartened to see you safe. You put your secret at risk. Those closest to me already know the truth. A truth I must now share with one and all. Vitra, calamity has come to Razatan. Our fair nation is rent by screams of pain and despair. More than ever, we require a strong leader to shepherd us through the storm. Reveal your true self to our people, Vitra, and guide us to salvation. What madness is this, I one? Thou dost forget thyself. Were we to reveal our duplicity, it would do naught but foster confusion and chaos. Nay, I shall remain the Satrap's loyal ally and do battle with the beasts. Easing hearts and leading the people to safety is thy task and thine alone. that you remain at Ahewan's side and render unto him what aid you may. I know not what lies ahead, but without you, Radzetan will not survive.
Take me with you. I am as at home fighting in the air as I am on land. Take me with you. Were well, my words unclear, I require no assistance. Thy place is at our one's side. Estinia, here. The last thing you ever wanted, a link pearl. We'd gain much from knowing your elevated perspective. And it'll keep you from getting lonely, which I know you love. <laughs> you heard the man. Seems I'm coming with you after all. Then I pray thy grip is iron. Be it on thy head if thou dost chance to fall. Fair enough. Now, shall we? Here it is as Vitra says, we will not survive this on our own, while I am loath to impose upon you again. I would insist if you did not, tis the very reason we have come. Then once more I find myself without words to thank you properly. Let us return to the capital and plan our next course of action. There you are. You've spoken with the survivors. Indeed. We thought to share what we have gleaned, that we might together gain a greater understanding of present circumstances. Fortuitous timing. Alizé and I completed our own investigations not long ago. Then we should take a moment to compare notes. Shall we begin with the two of you? So the merchant Karzal was gravely concerned about his business in the days preceding his untimely end. The tales we heard were much the same. The first victims to be changed into blasphemies were all overcome with anguish of one manner or another. Then those who saw their loved ones stolen before their eyes succumbed to a similar panic, setting in motion a chain of transformations. Fear, unease, despair, these negative feelings serve as a catalyst. If so, then it is not unlike the calamity that befell the ancients. With their creation magics, they unwittingly gave form to untold horrors. Had they simply lost control, surely it would have manifested in many forms, not all of them monstrous. Yet somehow, this phenomenon is triggered solely by the darkness in their hearts, a common thread with what we now witness. Common, but not identical. While the beasts the ancients faced were forged with magic alone, those of today are born of sentient beings. Why remains to be seen. But there is one fundamental difference between us and our predecessors. Our souls are sundered, whereas theirs were not. 
Perhaps that single variable makes all the difference. If I may, there was another detail that troubled me. We have it on good authority that Karl Zahl's transformation took place before the skies began to burn. What? If that's true, then the situation's more dire than we realized. It means even if there's no ominous sign presaging the final days, anyone, anywhere, has the potential to become a beast. Even in lands we thought safe, even as we speak, Look! It's the Sartrap! The Sartrap! Thank the heavens! My countrymen, I am relieved and heartened to see you strong and safe. While the danger has not yet passed, far from it, allow me to assure you that the beasts that raged within the city walls have been exterminated to the last. Outside this sanctuary, the brave men and women of the Radiant Host and our dragon ally continue to battle our unholy foes. I pray these tidings put your minds at ease and help you calm your hearts. Have faith that we shall soon conquer this terrible trial. Your Excellency, is there any word from Palaka's stand? My grandson was bound for there yesterday and I, I worry for his life. We are still awaiting a report, but I promise you, as soon as I have all to share, You, Your Excellency, I bring grave news. You are? I, I'm Matya of, of Akyali, a humble fisherman. Ah, I remember you from our first visit. Uh huh? Wait, y you're. But no, that can wait. When the skies turned red, I set off for Palakistan, stand, fearing for the safety of a friend. But as I drew near the village, I saw dreadful beasts all about. No! God have mercy! Your Excellency! Save my grandson, I beg of you! We will spare no effort to save all we can, but you must remain calm. Calm? You tell me to be calm? You saw those beasts? They tore our bravest warriors limb from limb. What if we are too late, huh? They to catch him, sink their fangs into him. The fangs! <laughs> Get away from her, now! We'll handle this. See the townspeople to safety. Lord, as fast as you can!
myself. Hey, hey. This is your job. Enough. You must run. For their sake and your own. Strong, my friends! Fear not, for we will defeat these abominations! Brave men and women of the Radiant Host, lend your Stola and thank with your aid. Let not a single beast escape. The rest of you, flee this place. Carry the wounded if you must. Head indoors or underground. Above all, stay calm. No beast will follow you. We will see to that. Alphano! Alize! Leave the city to us and make for Palika's stand at once! Matcha, show my friends to the village. I promise you, they're more capable than the host's finest. Right. Go with them, will you? We will save these people, as many as we can. <laughs> 